Moses groom. I just figured I'd show you start to finish. I've got him in the trach saver because he's just a little hyper. So it's easier for him. And I start with paw pads and nails. So this is the order of every groom that I do. I do one foot at a time. So you'll see it makes things more efficient. He's a very easy trim. Pull the hair down. I tap in front of the two toes. Show him the edges of his paws. Then I do his nails. So I do the back of the front, the back of the pad. I bring all that hair down and I trim that up. He's got very long quicks. He only comes every six weeks. Because he doesn't grow that fast. But his nails, I wish they could get done more frequently. And yes, I should be wearing a mask. But when I do recordings, I don't wear one because then you can't see my face and you can't hear me all that well. Let me see. And I get him as short as I can. And I come around his body to do these front. You pull the hair down, I use my thumb as a guide. edge just the outside of the paw pad, just the outside of it. I'll do the dew claw first.
Let me move you closer so I can show you something. So when I'm doing nails, I always, especially black nails, I'll take my fingernail and just press into the center of the nail when I start to see that black dot. And if it feels like a gummy bear consistency, then I stop. Because that's right before the quick. So nice and hard. Go around the edge. I gotta be careful with him. You can click them with the Dremel too, and that's not fun. I right, get as much off as I can. Last foot. Position my body on the side of him, and my control comes from my elbow on his shoulder. So I'm trimming back length. Not lifting his leg up too high so that he's uncomfortable. Uh -uh. He's a good boy. Sanitize my blade in between body parts. So I use, on a 40 blade, I use the number five clip cone to do underbellies. Safer, less risk of irritation. Lift them up gentle. And the same for the sanitary, the five on a 40 rather than a 10. Small rectangle. definitely sanitize. I come and do the front of each dog's ear bulb right here in this area here. Very gently. This is how I improve airflow. He doesn't have much, but I don't pluck. I trim. Pull that ear over really gently. Shave just in front of that ear bulb. And just a little inside the ear leather. Just a little. Okay. 
Gotta be careful here. In case you didn't know, you can, if there's an ear infection in the left, but not in the right, and if you cross-contaminate with a cotton ball or the rag when you're cleaning, if you bring what was in this ear in this ear, you can bring an infection to the other ear. So, sanitize. The Andes uh, Cool Care kills everything. Okay, so I've cleaned off my blade so I don't cross-infect the ear. Pulling up what little hair there is in here. So it's easier to get to. Actually, just in front of the bulb. Helps the ear lay flat too with the haircut. I hold up these longer hairs. Just get them with the corner of my clipper. ready for bath. So I'll be using Agrams texturizing shampoo. Sometimes I'll use um, the Whitman's whiskers, the real McCoy rough coat. That's great for harsh coats too. And then I do the pro keratin leave-in conditioner on him. That's great for wire coats too. Because he's little, I'm just going to apply the shampoo by hand and I cover the eyes and I put the nozzle directly on top of the head and then I cover the side of the nose. So it doesn't go in because they have that little side hole on the side of their nose. So I always cover that. I'm going to go real close to be sure I don't get the water in his ears. Some people use cotton ball, but you don't need it. When you're taking your time, you can avoid it going in the ear. She scrubbed those paws. Thank you. 
Gotta get these ears good. Remember those ear edges? I groom tearless facial. Nothing is truly tearless. Remember that. He gets good eye boogies. There's no such thing as a totally tearless shampoo. It's just a selling point. Get that flu area around his mouth. Then I have this little very, very small comb. You can use a flea comb. And I comb out the eye boogies. You don't want to rip them out hard. Gross. Then I will comb this through the muzzle. Make sure the shampoo is distributed. Get that mouth really clean. Huh. Between your eyes. Yes. And the ears on this guy. Okay, I have the trach saver on him, so I loosen that. Take one side off. Just to be sure I get every nook and cranny. Start at the top and let gravity do the work. I'm going to give him a second shampoo. Because he only comes every six weeks. There's a lot of dirt in my drain. And look what just comes off him. Just him alone. All right, one more quick. Side. Okay. Now we do a nice, nice rinse. Make sure everything's out.
And then the Proceratin leave-in conditioner. A gentle, gentle, you rub it between your hands. Don't need a lot. Just use your fingertips, work it through. Don't need it a lot. And this is a leave-in, so I will not be rinsing that out. But while that sits, put his groomer's loop back on. And this is every dog. While the conditioner sits for a minute, I clean ears. I have these little small towels. And I like Hydra's ear cleaner. I like also Lisa Leedy's Magic Ear Elixir. It's fantastic for just doing in between, um, just doing your dogs too, but I need to finish this up. So you can see the dirt comes right off with this stuff, it's amazing. And gently, you're not going in too deep. Cleaning all the nooks and crannies. I like to use my finger. Check all the folds. Then I use a completely different part of the rag for the other ear because you don't want to cross contaminate, as I said before. So this breaks up, look, that breaks up all that ear wax. Can you see that build up on there? That's just the ear leather, because they get dirty. Nice and gentle. Check all the nooks and crannies. Push the ear out a little bit. All right. Demo time. This also works in the conditioner when you use the leave-in. I keep changing spots on my towel so that I'm not drying a wet dog with a wet towel. The more you let them shake, and the more towel drying you do, the less time on the table drying. Can I shake? Good boy. They'll expel like 70%. Get those thick areas, like right behind the tail. Gentle squeeze and hold on the tail and the ears. Move to a dry spot. Get that belly. Gently squeeze and hold the feet. Where most of your water has traveled down because of gravity. Dry spot. Yes, sure, that look. If you need a second towel, get a second towel.
Terriers dry so fast though. He's got a really wiry, harsh coat, so. Coat type contributes to drying time. Very wet foot. Very wet legs. Can I shake? Put my towel over, lots of dry spots there. Good, nice rub down, sir. Yes. Get that water out of those ears. Dry inside, different spot on the towel. You don't want to cross contaminate. Get the inside of the ear leather too. The ear edges that hold a lot of water, especially on your thick eared dogs. To the table. Come, come. Good boy. You did a good job. If they're really wet, which they shouldn't be if you dried them right, you can put a towel on the table. Happy hoodie. Reduces noise, helps to dry. For him, I use the flat nozzle and then I'll take it off after. I don't have it on high, it's like on low medium. I go through once and I blow off the majority of the moisture at the skin. So now that I've blown the majority of the water off, I'm going to use my hand in front of the nozzle as I blow the coat as flat as I can. And then I'm gonna take the nozzle off to make sure it's fully dry. And then cut. Okay, that is dry. And use your hand to feel how damp or dry it is. You'll be able to feel it in this spot that isn't, that still has a lot of moisture.
keep it really close. It's almost like cutting them. Every dog after the dry. The kind of brush you use depends on the length of the coat and the type of coat. He's got a very short coat, so I have very short bristles here. Very small brush, because he's a very small dog. comb after, but since I've got this loop off, I'll comb this area first. I switch to the other side. Remember those armpits? He wears a harness, so I want to make sure he's got nothing there. Okay, back into the trach saver. Nice and gentle. Don't want to scrape their skin. Dogs have to be their absolute most vulnerable to allow themselves to be groomed by us. So it sincerely is in my opinion, an honor when a dog allows you to do it. This is obviously not his favorite thing, but he knows I won't hurt him. Then I go over with a very fine tooth comb. I'm using my Utsumi half moon comb, the, the widest side. 
I use this for a lot more than just faces. I mean, the thinnest side I'm using where the tines are closest together and see that undercoat that's coming out still. That stuff can clog up your clipper or your guard comb. So always brush and comb and make sure that your prep is ideal no matter the coat type before the haircut. Prep is literally 90% of the work. So getting out some little hairs. Let's do this side bud. I have some dogs, they automatically know my routine. So they'll just see how he just stood up, he knows. All right. Come the ears from the outside and the inside. What a good boy. Yes. Okay, he's ready for groom. As long as they go short, all over for summer. So I think I'm gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do the purple number four comb. That's his usual dig over a 40 blade. Give him a little pet, let him know it's coming. Got a little fat, I call it a fat cap. A little fat cap here. Okay, sorry, there was a, a warning that just came up on my phone, shut it off, it's an emergency warning. We have a massive bridge in our area, the Gold Star Bridge over by the submarine base in Groton and it's closed, I guess there's a gas fire. So, again, I'm going with the direction of the coat, and I'm going to switch this loop to around his neck while I do this part so that I can get the area I need. Going with the grain of the hair. Let the clipper do the work. You don't have to press hard. I start right at the back of the occiput on him. He's got some little rolls here, so I need to make sure I kind of stretch the skin forward a little bit. I'm putting his head down. It's important to go with the grain on these harsh coats so you're going to see every clipper mark. Mm -hmm. You need them to get their legs straight. You just push at the elbow a little bit. Nice and gentle.
And this dog is, as soon as I take my phone to uh, text mom about pickup time, he knows the groom is almost over and it's impossible to get any after photos from him. He just turns into a maniac. He knows it. Sit so under the belly. <clears throat> Come under. I lift up his butt a little bit. And this dog, I go in the direction of the coat growth because he's hardly got any on his underbelly. Some dogs I'll go in reverse to give him and make sure it's nice and short for a pet trim. I go right behind the ear on him. Lift up the ear, go under the ear. Behind and right under. And I go on the side of the head, not way up high, just about where the top of the ear is. And I go straight down the side and under the ear. And I don't go in front of the eye. Mom likes a very neat beard. So again, just from the line of the ear, not in front of the eye. under that ear bowl. Watch those calyx. Watch that tongue. kind of like a schnauzer from the little bit of past the corner of the eye to the mouth. I skim that. Checking over from the top. I'm gonna do a gentle skim from the occiput into the neck. His face gets scissored otherwise. All right, let's get the other side. Let's see how you're doing, pal. in a minute. Gotta wash the skin flap. You don't want to get that caught on your flipper. Let's 
Same thing with that flappy skin behind the elbow. So I'm going to go a little in reverse right here in front of his man parts. Give him a little bit of a wick so I don't take all of that off, otherwise he pees on himself. So I don't fully shave the penis. Ah, ah, ah. So the rest will take me about 20 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm just taking the same guard comb and I'm gonna go over his legs with it. Mom likes him the same length all over. And then to get the inside, Lift up the opposite leg, not too high. Hold that tail. You can hold the knee just a little at the back of the leg and then on the knee slightly just to get it straight for you. So you can do your clipper work. And then I'll go on the opposite side, get the inside of the opposite leg. I already did the armpit area. Again, that hold at the back of the elbow. Top a little. That for finish work. Again, elbow. Just a teensy push in the back of the elbow. Skin flap. Right here, I'll skim up just a little because that pop hat always gets in the way. On this dog, not every dog. Getting that tuck up. Again, right here at the back of the leg and my fingers on the knee. Not lifting them up hard. My finger keeps hitting the on off switch. tail. Usually hold it from the base. Uh-uh, stay up.
Super easy haircut from this guy. Takes care of the length. And then I'll use my Utsumi 64, 25, 65, 18 chunkers just to blend this. The chunkers allow it to keep like that wiry look because it doesn't cut all the hair, but I'll take off the bulk. And give them a nice little blend. Now for his feet, he doesn't have much. So I go on a 40 blade and I tap just around the edges of his feet to make a nice clean line. So I have my clipper turned over and I'm tapping right up against the paw mat. And then I'm just gonna check underneath. I double check my paw pad work. Comb that down. Put my clipper upside down. Oh, stay up. And tap around. Uh -uh. A little round foot. To this side. And now this allows me to see on the inside of that front and rear foot. Check the pads. Yes. Almost done. If you lift up the opposite foot, it'll give you some leverage. So it'll keep, they won't dance on that foot for you. I was checking from the other side. This is the new Utsumi pink line comb. You've seen them with longer tines where they have this, it's like um, a elastic or plastic coating. It's grippy. Um, some of them will have the silver, then the pink, then the silver. This is new for smaller dogs and it's great for wire coats too. And I use my speedies.
Now he gets a lot of eye boogies, so I get close right here. Stop thinking. And then right above the top of his eye to open him up, just on this guy. This is not every dog. Then his visor, comb everything down. And go from the outside corner of this eye, kind of a wide U to the outside corner of that eye. And I am doing my best not to get his lashes. forward and I start to blend it up and out come forward side thinners and remember I already took the guard comb on the sides here and stop licking your mouth is all wet I don't want to have to redry it. Now I'm gonna blend. So I'm gonna blend here the right in front of the ear. this cheek, making sure it's tight at the bottom of the ear. And I always check this guy because how he always has his mouth wide open. I want to make sure his face looks nice and tidy in his general always expression, which is 90 miles an hour. But I gotta keep that closed. So I'm gonna go half circle here, blend this. You see the difference? See here, there's a big bump and a bunch of mess. Come here, you. And here, we're gonna blend that so there's no big bump. And that mouth is wide open. Mm -hmm. Watch that tongue. Get these flu hairs. And start blending. doesn't have a bunch of hair in the front, so can't do around 
muzzle on this guy. We just need to blend everything nice and neat so these hairs don't go into his mouth. And rot his teeth because they're always wet. There's a really long one I missed. Gonna start blending again. I took that guard comb from here down. I turn his head, it's easier to work from the side of the dog. Turning right in front of the ear. Tuck that bowl underneath. Check his sticky art pal part out that sticks out when he smiles. Gently close his mouth. Trim up these things that go into his mouth. Nice and neat. Let's see. So I'm just checking the symmetry. I'm not looking for a round muzzle, but combing it up and out allows me to check for symmetry and stragglers. And then I go right in front of this lip right here. Okay, the back of the head, and I did that skim. I'm just gonna neaten that up ever so slightly with my chunkers to blend. So I have a nice transition here. And then I make sure that he's going to be back in six weeks. So this is blended and short enough that in two weeks it won't be in his eyes. Because that's, we want the haircut to last. And then his ears, I trim them up occasionally to neaten them up, but kind of like the little character that they bring to him. Piece can go. And then just here, I blend into that ear set that's left over from last time. 
that grew out from last time. So I comb on him straight over. You can also bend the ear, pop it up from underneath with your finger. So you can blend those See your long hair right here. Now I'm going to double check. Around his mouth. Make sure it'll be nice and short. I didn't miss any of those. Gross longo hairs. <gasps> Could you stop licking? <sighs> now I'm going to take a second and I'm going to step back and look at him. <clears throat> you good boy. A little bit of a bump here when he smiles. Neaten that up. And that's Moe's. Neat and tidy personality trim on a Terrier Mix. Are you going to sit?